Gods of Thunder. Welcome to Pod of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting, brought to you by Blue Microphones, and thank you to Steve Pond's daughter for the intro today. Guess who is on the mic? I'll give you one guess, you'll never guess. Oh my God, who is it? It's my buddy Andy. That's right, it's your buddy Andy, America's little brother, and today, oh, we've got a special treat for you. Put your hands together for the one... The only... Yeah, you better say my name and say it right, motherfucker. That's right, his name is... Yeah, you better oh my say gosh, my name twice? and say it right, motherfucker. That's right. It's Chris L. Chris L's in the house, and Chris L's once been described as... He was a moocher, a card cheat, a country club golf hustler, a scumbag. There you go, there he is. That's you, more like it. You country club hustler. That's right. <laughs> So what's don't what's, play golf with me at the country club, you'll get hustled. Play golf occasionally. I don't play you? golf once a year. Once a year. Yeah, I know you've the, mentioned it before. The old high school college crew. It's coming up in August. Has maybe that, September? I don't know. Has that been going on since back then, or is that something that came up later uh, in life? It started about four or five years ago. Okay, so it's someone came up with the idea. You never know when one of us is going to... Ch- we're, we're at the age where we're going to start checking out, so we have to enjoy each other's company that's whenever a, possible. It's a depressing thought. It's true, though. It, Why deny it? That does happen. It can happen. Yeah. It, well, it does I happen. I don't go for that shit. Me neither. I don't yeah. go for that shit. But. I mean, we're not in a hurry to see it happen, maybe with a couple of the guys in the group. <laughs> Guys who take too long golfing. The guy who who uh, wears the big dogs t shirt. There is one of those. Yeah, I didn't I know you. I had... told you that. If you yeah. did, I forgot. I didn't realize you had a big dog in the gang. Yeah, man, that's great. When he showed up with the big dogs t shirt at the golf course, did the country club manager say, "How dare him! How dare him!" Yeah, I think so because I th- I think the big dogs shirt he wore was the. Uh, the one uh, liquor in the front, poker in the rear, the, you know, <laughs> liquor store with the card game going yeah. on in the back. Pretty clever. Uh, Yo, tell me with this. There you go. Yeah. No, we, we're not in a hurry to see anybody uh, check out. Of but, course not. Uh, of course you know, not. We're but... getting to that point. Yeah, I get we're that. We're closer to the end than we are the beginning. At least my crew is. Sure. I mean, I'm. I, I don't even know how many years older you are than me, but however many it is, I've got two friends who were gone that were my grade. So, I mean, it, it happens. Yeah, it can I happen mean, to anyone. One, one of and my, it does uh, happen. Yeah, a guy I knew from the band days uh, passed away actually 10 years ago last week. He passed away. He, he was in a uh, scooter accident in, in Chicago. So, mm. you know. There are a few there. Remarkably, we're mostly intact, though. So yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. What a morbid start to the show. Well, right? it's but it's it's reality, though. It is. It is. I wish. Um, and if in in the uh, un, in hopefully the the event that something like that was to happen, you don't want to regret not taking advantage of the opportunities to get together and hang out. And, yeah. Conduct yourselves like dickheads. I mean, Reminisce. Which is what we do. Yeah, all that fun stuff. Behave sure. like dickheads yeah, on a golf that's course. What stupid old white guys do. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Yeah, you got to enjoy yourself somehow. And if that's it, then that's it. That's good. Yeah. How many times have you heard the story? Oh, I, I, I hadn't talked to him in years, or we haven't seen each other. You know, this is our way of avoiding that. Yeah. You know the the, oh, the I wish more. We Wish more, we would have seen each other. Right. Yeah. The right. morbid stuff is way down at the uh, bottom of the reasons why we get together, but it is uh, but, it is factored in. Sure, it's in there. It makes sense. <clears throat> you know, I was driving home from work today, and this is going to be a bad thing to say, so brace yourself. But I wish more people were dead. Coming <laughs> home on my commute, 
where they decided this is a yearly rant this time of year so get ready where they decide it's oh, a good idea to shut down major thoroughfares oh, so Christ people could sake. run or bike on them instead of running or biking on designated areas for that. There's no day where I get to fucking ride my car, drive over the bike path, yeah. and you're not allowed. Is that what all those goddamn tents were yes. set up for? for stupid. LSD? You can get your bottled water and your shirt that has a bunch of bank logos on it and... Jeez. A plastic gold medal. I don't know. Maybe we're not preaching to... I, I would assume the majority of listeners know what we're talking about. But anyone in a big city, for whatever reason, races, either on foot or on bicycle, need to happen on major roads, and they have to start closing it down days in advance Yeah, to set this up for Saturdays. So, it's so stupid. My ride home today was a nightmare. Yeah. And I was just swearing the entire time to myself, looking at everyone walking around, setting up tents and setting up like the bike racks to block streets so can't cars can't go. And the new thing they do, they reuse uh, the big salt trucks. Mm-hmm. So in case anyone wanted to get crazy and try to crash their car into a crowd of people, they have right. these giant salt trucks yeah. blocking the roads. Exactly. The yeah. anti-terrorism. Which is a pretty thing. great, it's a good idea. Sure, it's a good idea. It's sad that it's come to this. It's sad that it's come to you it. Know? But also, I just don't understand why you have to, if you want to run, why don't you just run? Why do you have to pay someone $50, get a t-shirt with a Chase Bank logo on well, it? Well, it's kind of the same reason why why do we do this show versus just get together every week without <laughs> microphones well, and talk you know, about music you know you want i've never said i'm not a hypocrite right so, but you know. my question is why don't they do this shit at non-rush hour times like clearly these people don't have jobs well that's the thing better to do the race is saturday morning right right now we're recording this thursday night but they have to start prepping everything and closing the side streets and that create and then they close like one lane on either side of the street which impacts traffic tremendously at that time of day. Yeah. It's so stupid. Well, back to the salt trucks thing, you know. If some maniac were to plow his car into a large group of people, our uh recently ex-mayor would have had something to say about it. He would have gotten on the mic and said this. How dare him? How dare him? <laughs> the best. So that's why they park the salt trucks. Is he there. done being mayor already? Yeah, man. They that's swore official? in uh, Lightfoot on Monday. They I did? Believe. Okay. I knew she won, but I didn't know. Wow. Big fan of hers. I yeah. love her demeanor. She's just a just a even keel, calm. I don't know. Right. I'm, a, I'm a fan. I haven't it's, heard her speak yet. It's le- she's a legitimately different type of politician not and not in the way of our president let's put it that way we'll leave it at that i don't want to go down that road but <laughs> Lori lightfoot is a breath of fresh air so right. we'll see what happens if she can make things better first order of business no more races and if you're gonna do a race do it in the park not on the street Yes, do away with that. Stop. Do away with the foot races and all the horrible violence when the weather turns warm. That's that's, that's this weekend. Yeah, they're uh, already bracing for that. She they? just got sworn in, and then it's going to be a bloodbath in the streets. So, yeah, so typi- welcome to the mayor's office. Typically in the city of Chicago, over the three-day Memorial Day weekend, as the weather breaks, there's usually an insane spike in violence, uh, yeah. which is not... Something to be proud of, but it happens every year, and it's it does. They're, it's the talk of the Tuesday they're, they're, after they're Memorial they're bracing Day. Bracing for it, so yeah. see how the new mayor reacts to it. So stay home. Well, it's too late. Well, stay out of certain neighborhoods. Uh, you should be okay. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but this is after the fact. It is. We're not live, so sorry. We're not live. Sorry if you got a bottle broken over your head, or worse. But we are. Uh, <clears throat> coming out with an episode this holiday week and uh contrary to what we've done in the past this is not going to be a necessarily a throwaway episode we are it's just the two of us yeah no guest this week 
Chris is stretched out on the buddy bench today. <laughs> yep, I'm like uh, the the, the uh, Burt Reynolds Playgirl centerfold <laughs> position over yeah. here. With your blue yeah, microphone exactly. covering your schlong. Yeah, with the, Excellent. the pop filter over my uh, Where your scrotum. genital <laughs> area. Um, but we're going to go back to a formula that the listeners seem to love, which is a purely random selection from the listener submission list. I'm excited about it. It's been a couple weeks. The last one was um, Brain Scan by Voivod, right? right which Three uh, weeks yielded ago. extremely mixed results, if I'm putting it politely. Yeah, but that's part of the fun. Well, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that uh, people like about the randomness of it is, uh, you know, we're not guaranteed that at least one person is going to be a fan of the song. To date, uh, generally the trend has been if you pick the song, you're, you're, you're generally a fan of it. Yeah. And whether or not the rest of the people on the panel are is what's yet to be determined. But right. This way, uh, it is purely random. Andy's got a new, uh, almost like the ping pong ball machine on the <laughs> NBA draft. <laughs> yeah. Spits out the number. <laughs> um, one thing that's different from back in season one, where we, uh, we're on a mission to do every Kiss song, so when a song came out, we uh, couldn't really just toss it aside and no. not ever do it. Right. We're going to uh, generate a number off the list, and he's going to look at the song, and if it's something that... Because there's a lot of absolute shit on this list, no question about it. Yeah. Joke songs. <laughs> Joke songs. Songs that nobody's ever heard of. Yeah. This is not going to benefit us in any way strategically so these are things we have to take into account We're, we make strategic moves we do on this podcast you have to again if we weren't into making strategic moves we would shut down these microphones and just sit here yeah and bullshit about music amongst right. ourselves right we're, we're not doing that we want to we're putting ourselves out there and hoping something happens so occasionally you have to think strategically mm-hmm so if the song that uh, the number generator brings up is not to Andy's liking, we're going to kick it out and uh, generate another, another number until we find something that we think is worth doing. So this is the first time we're going to introduce this into the randomness, where it's random, but it could get thrown out. Yes. So my question is this. Is it... If it's shitty or if we don't feel like listening to it today, does it stay in? Well, you're right by the computer, so it's like entirely your decision. I know, I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking aloud, though. If Say it's one that comes up and we say we don't want it. Is it eliminated from the list or can it be chosen again later? Maybe it stays. Maybe it'll grab us another Depends time. on how shitty it okay. is and how <laughs> varying. obscure or worthless it is. Okay, but. varying degrees of shitty. Yeah. But that being said, we should also mention that the majority of the list is good. Oh, yes. And exciting and fun right. and interesting. But yeah, we didn't want it to be something where we absolutely are committing to whatever happens and then dedicating a whole episode. Like, for example, there, I'm sure... Th- there are a few instances on there where, where guys have submitted songs from their own bands. I've seen We're not that. doing those, probably. Um, no offense, but... Strategic moves, right. ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag strategic moves. Then again, if it comes up and we're of the mood to do it, we might do Then it. we might, yeah, but sure. If, if it's strategic. If prefer to do something that's somewhat known, it might... Yeah. I'll, the, I'll go. Although the, it's it is Memorial Day, so we could go back to the uh, complete throwaway approach to our holiday episodes. But yeah. Uh, yeah, just see what happens. That's what the that's what people like about the randomness of it. So yeah. All right. Well, we've got. Let's see how many are on here. I keep hitting my head on the microphone. You hear that? What a dick. Um, a l- new gear. We yeah, got. new gear. I'm not used to it. Maneuver around it. Yeah. <sighs> 1,186 entries. So we will be drawing a random number. And let's see. Okay. So 
between 24 and 1186. Those are that's the range. Right. The, the numbers one to th- 23 are the section of songs that we've done already. So. Yeah. All right. So, without any further ado, we will draw the number. When I click here. Ooh, nice number. 797. So much drama here. What could All it be? courtesy of Google. Google's now, if we be. could get an endorsement from them, we'd be well on our way. We'd be on to something. It's a yeah, studio apartment in Silicon Valley where we can record <laughs> these episodes. <laughs> Although right. they got a headquarters in the in the city, not far from where I work. Yeah, they're like West West Loop. Yeah, yeah. Right. McDonald's headquarters is right over there. They just moved over they there. Did. They took over Oprah's old spot, yep. Hamburger University. It's right down the street from where I'm at. Buzz off, Oprah. Ronald McDonald's coming to town. I'd forgotten that they took over her old uh, joint. They knocked it down and built their own I place. I did not know that. Yeah. Huh? They put I, I mean, I knew that. I forgot about it. Well, I didn't know that they knocked the old place yeah. down and built up a new place. So. They said, oh, this was Oprah's place? Get the wrecking ball. Yeah. Not good enough for Ronald McDonald. No. Can't have that mojo uh, <laughs> for our new HQ. No. Okay, so we've got a song here. Do... Is that's up to me, or do we do like the Jericho you want intro? Me to and then walk we, over there and no, I'm look saying do, at it? do I should I announce it? Then no, we do like the Jericho no, intro. No, you, you decide if we're going to do it. If not, you cast it aside. I'm going to cast it aside. All right, good. Yeah. All right. You don't need to announce it. Okay. All right. Again, you can tell me later, though. I'm kind of curious, but yeah, okay. draw another number. What eight twenty one is this? What you got? Yeah, this sucks. Third. Jeez, there's more <laughs> crap on here than we thought. All right, here we go. 11, 1173, almost the last one. I feel confident. <laughs> Come on. These are so bad. All right, draw again. <laughs> Just keep going. It's the new way. All right, All right. 255. This has got to be good. It's higher up on the list. Got to be good. Got to be good. Maybe not. I'll try it. All right. I don't know it. Settled on one. Yep. You don't know it. Nope. Are you familiar with the band? Yes. Yes, but not this particular song. All right. That's interesting. You can tell me what the other three were off mic. All right. Well, without any further ado, let's turn the microphone over to Chris Jericho. Chris, give it to us. All right, Harold. This one's called Getting Tighter. Off of Come Taste the Band by the band Deep Purple. Ow! Oh, ooh. Ah, uh, ooh. All right, this is an interesting one. Now, uh, I've I'm not familiar with this era of. I mean, I'm familiar with uh, the lineup, which yeah. would be uh, your boy David Coverdale would have been on vocals. Who, He's been my boy for a week yeah. since I added him on uh, following him on, on Twitter. Twitter. Very he, cheeky guy on Twitter. He's a nonstop tweeter. Yeah, he is. Just retweeting memes and smiley yeah. faces. <laughs> Pretty much. And then sometimes it's a smiley face times two. Yeah. X2 is what he puts yes. when it's especially funny. Fun follow on Twitter. But he's the lead singer uh, in this lineup. I'm pretty sure Glenn Hughes is, a, is the bass player. Um, now, you'll have to look this up. Uh, whether or not it's Blackmore or Tommy Bolin on guitar. Mm-hmm. I'm going to guess Tommy Bolin. It's Tommy Bolin. See, this is a very interesting because, and I'm going to take a lot of flack from the other guitar nerds out there, but Tommy Bolin, very highly regarded guitarist. I'm almost entirely unfamiliar with his work, both, uh, and Deep Purple and uh, solo stuff. I uh, died young, like 25 years old, I think, mm. drug overdose. But uh, he replaced Blackmore and Deep Purple. And uh, so, yeah, this is a very interesting selection here. 
Glenn See, Hughes is in the band for this lineup, right? Yes, he is. Ooh, interesting. His lead vocals on this track. Oh, okay. I wonder what Coverdale did. I guess he just stood there and played a tambourine while <laughs> he was, things were he, going on. He was uh, clipping comics out of the newspaper and posting them on the fridge in the studio. Right. The he's, 1975 he's version. He was just tweeting while... Uh, Hughes yeah. was handling the lead vocals. Yeah. It was but, a, a, uh, a primitive version of retweeting. Yes. <laughs> it was um, faxing. But no, this is definitely a cool choice. Uh, I'm uh, ashamedly unfamiliar with uh, this era of the band in terms of the music, aside from the big signature songs like Burn and Stormbringer. Uh, but those are both with the uh, Blackmore lineup. Hmm. So this one is could be my first ever uh experience with uh tommy bowl and deep purple so i'm pretty stoked okay and we should mention that this song was submitted by longtime listener alex frank oh how, yeah. do, we, how do we say your last name alex i've seen it written a hundred times a thousand times frank frank he'll pry for message me and, he will uh, and he'll steer me in the right direction he'll call me a dickhead but yeah. and he'll be, he'd be right to do so huge but, uh, new jersey devils fan by the way that's his team huh yeah um what was i gonna say uh so what's your um thoughts on deep purple in general andy i don't want to upset anyone <laughs> Because, you know, the last time we had this conversation, I think it was about Cheap Trick, we had a, an upset, irate listener who left us a negative review on iTunes because of uh, something that I shared. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> Are you was, serious? Yeah. Um, I think it might have been something that I said and then you agreed with. And it was, I'm not completely familiar with their entire catalog, and I would like to spend more time listening to them. And that warrants that's, a negative Yes, review. that sparked outrage because it's 2019 and everything's available, so it's your own fault if you don't know everything, basically. Yeah, okay, here we go again. It's like <laughs> there's only so much fucking time in the day, Yeah. all right? So get out of here with that. Yeah, I'm a married adult with a full-time job. Yeah, it just... Don't even get me going on that. I didn't. I wasn't even aware of that review. I'm gonna have to go look. Can you reply to reviews? On no, that? you can't. Well, I'll cut and paste it and attack on social media. Then I was not aware of this. Yeah, it's from from April. I just pulled it up. Someone sent it to me when it happened. Like a Is it, so, it's like a one star review. It's two out of five. Oh, well, at least that we was got two. Generous. That yeah. was nice. Yeah. Read it. You want to hear it now? Yeah, I want to hear it. All right. Now. Well, there's only one way to read it, right? Yeah. Hold on. Ah, buy me a minute. Getting tighter will be my grip around this guy's neck after I uh, hear this review. <laughs> it's been a while since we played this. It's been a long time. Go easy with the volume. going to knock some people out. Seriously? Seriously. How can these quote-unquote rock fans in their 40s and 50s live their entire lives and not be more familiar with bands like Cheap Trick, The Stooges, The Misfits, etc.? These guys drive me insane with their lack of knowledge. Back in the day, I had to mow lawns just to, <laughs> just to buy a few records a week. There was no internet, only my gut intuition song titles and album art to judge by semicolon often i scored sometimes i wasted my money yeah that's fine today with the internet there's no excuse for being ignorant when it pertains to music just get online and check it out there's nothing stopping these clowns from getting quote unquote familiar with classic bands that any quote unquote rock fan worth their salt should have listened to way back in high school. Well, there, so, there is something stopping you. That's the amount of time in a single day and in a <laughs> single lifetime. There's only so much you can do. So, yeah. Uh, and that, again, on that uh, note, I'm 
completely unfamiliar with Tommy Boland's work, a, a, a god to many guitar fans, and I've heard next to nothing of it. Well, we should have paused the episode, looked everything up, and acted like we knew everything. Well, see, and there you have it, yes. Is that what you want? You want us to fake like we know everything, do pre-production horse shit, or have some producer feeding us information in our ear? I mean, you really think that people on other shows know all this shit? They know nothing. They they know <laughs> as as little as we do, right. you know? Or like you're watching a sports broadcast. Wow, this color commentator seems to know everything about what's going on. Yeah, somebody's feeding the information into his earpiece. Okay? Yeah, there's a team of people. Anything. There's a team of people pulling yeah. up statistics and information. He's thinking factoids. about banging one of the cheerleaders. He doesn't know uh, <laughs> how many yards per carry Zeke Elliott had <laughs> last season off the top of his head. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, man, how how naive and and clueless are people? I Jesus, don't know. you know, you you try and put out some authenticity. You you try to be vulnerable and open, and this is what you get. Well, at least he gave us two stars instead yeah. of one. Dickhead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking jerk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like, whatever. <laughs> So every song that would come up, he'd be familiar with it. Get lost. Oh, once the internet came out, he learned every song yeah, ever. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, we were watching porn on the internet. <laughs> Sorry, we weren't delving into music. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> we were watching snippets from Camel Toe videos. <laughs> instead of, uh, you know, delving into the deep cuts of Cheap Trick. Jesus. Yeah. Right. People are something else, aren't they? They are, they are. So Getting Tighter is track three. Well, go back oh. to go back to you you never really did oh. you really expand on your thoughts oh, on no, no. Deep Purple. So you know, I know like the hits. Yeah. Highway Star right. is a favorite. Um Space Truckin's cool. Obviously Smoke on the Water, of course, but um I don't go deep with Deep Purple. So, well, they've had several lineups and so, gone through different uh, versions of the band. So they've put out a lot of different sort of different uh, approaches to music. You know, I've heard uh, descriptions of the Bolin era, Bolin era, as being a little funkier. So okay. I'm kind of looking forward to hearing what this is all about. Well, just looking at the album cover here. It's a uh, so th- again the album title, "Come Taste the Band," yeah, and it's got uh, I don't know if that's a glass of red wine or if that's some kind of uh, some kind sipping of, chard yeah, or uh, what is that called, cognac or something. Yeah, it looks more like a goblet from here. Although it's, <laughs> it is, it appears to be red, but right, but it's, it's a short. Yes, it glass, is. So it's more of like a goblet. Yeah. Not as tall as a wine glass. Yeah. Just so from this angle. That makes me wonder what's really inside. Yeah. I guess that's why they want you to come taste the yeah. band. Come taste Coverdale. You know, he had something to do with naming this uh, album. Yeah, pervert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Silly pervert. Everything. There is nothing about that guy that isn't generated from his nutsack. <laughs> Every, He's always smiling. Yeah. Well, she, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> literally every waking moment, that guy is thinking about nailing women. He's just horny all the time. Oh, absolutely. And he loves every second of it. Of course it. he does. Yeah. What's not to love about it? <laughs> Using the mic stand as a phallus, cranking himself off in front of arenas of people. Yeah. That guy's something else. He's doing it right. He is doing it right. So and also it's got all five band members. Their faces are in the wine glass with the red liquid. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the band. So band that's and it's John Lord on organ, keyboards, and Ian Pace, of course, on drums. Right, rounding yes. out this lineup. Yep. So I don't know um, which guy's which, but who's the guy with the gigantic mustache? It's probably John Lord. Insane mustache yeah. on this cover. He might have the world's largest upper lip, like from 
bottom of nose to t- to uh, bottom of lip, if that makes sense. Top of lip. Yeah, to top of lip. Yep. Good Room Lord. for a big mustache. <laughs> It'd fit know. two women on that. <laughs> it's like a bus yeah, or exactly. mustache rides. <laughs> Mass transit yeah, bus right. mustache rider. All right. So uh, like the Chevrolet Suburban of mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> the third row seats yes, that exactly. fold up. The DVD player that comes down for <laughs> added entertainment. <laughs> Uh, okay so yeah this is this is uh interesting i'm stoked about this one great choice uh, yeah alex yeah so this is track three of nine and i believe this was a single yeah it's okay. got the little star next to it i don't know let's ask that guy on the itunes review he yeah, knows exactly. everything exactly yeah please inform us a great one about you everything dickhead. related to classic rock <laughs> the hell out of here so here's what it says. Um, I don't know this. I'm looking at the internet for my answer. Singles from Come Taste the Band. Europe only, You Keep on Moving was a single. US only, Getting Tighter. And the B-side is Love Child. So there you go. So this is the US single. All right. So without any further ado, are you ready for three minutes and 38 seconds of Getting Tighter? I like the length and... Uh... You know, that's about the right time for a single. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm interested mainly to, to hear Boland's guitar work, but also if it's Hughes on lead vocals, are we going to get any Coverdale at all in this cut? That's kind of weird. Is yeah, that... They were two strong uh, lead vocalists for sure. I mean, yeah. Glenn Hughes is definitely known as much, if not more, for his vocals and his bass playing. But uh, when you've got a dedicated lead singer, uh, you know, I mean, yes, it's a studio album, so you can just cut it as a four piece or maybe did some backing vocals. But uh, you got to figure if it was a single, they're going to bust it out on stage. So what's Coverdale do? Is it just he'd retire backstage to fuck somebody, come back out when it's over? He's either doing that or he's just smiling somewhere. Yeah. In yeah. the corner Enjoying by himself. Enjoying life. <laughs> Looking down his pants and smiling, yeah, exactly laughing. Exactly right. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> All right. Well, I say we get into it. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. Already okay. I can, yeah. Okay, already you can hear the uh, kind of funk. Uh, a little scratch guitar going on there, which, believe it or not, uh, Blackmore had a bit of an element of that to his playing, although he was much heavier and aggressive than this. This is a cleaner style of guitar playing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Blackmore did a lot of interesting stuff that uh, uh, kind of got lost and, you know, it wasn't a... a ton of subtlety in what he did he was a pretty in your face uh you know yeah bold confident player but uh so yeah already you can hear where the uh the elements of funk are uh right off the bat yeah and not that they were necessarily funky but they had a song funk 49 tommy bowen i know that he was also in the james gang replaced joe walsh in that band this guy did a lot in a short amount he of did. time huh yeah i mean I, i'm pretty sure he was around 25 when he passed on you can look that up if you get a minute yeah but uh yeah he was one of these uh wonder kind guys who came on the scene at a young age and made a big impression and uh, I know he did some solo work with uh, Billy Cobham on the drums, so it was like a jazz fusion style. So yeah, this guy was all very versatile and uh, highly regarded in guitar circles, which uh, I'm going to be bashed for not having heard any of it before now. But I'll say again, you can only listen to so much. Right. There's other things in life to do. Than listen to music, right? 
And sometimes you want to listen to the same music. That's exactly. okay, too. Right. You don't have to only listen to new music. Or music you haven't heard before, I should say. New to you music. Exactly right. <laughs> I hear some of uh, those shaker eggs. It's not tambourine yet, but I hear percussive. That must uh, be what uh, Coverdale is yeah. doing. <laughs> like, well, if I'm not going to be singing, i got to be doing something. I can only laugh to myself for so long, so give me something to shake on the stage yeah. other than my penis. Yeah, he's probably had a, a custom-made set in the, in the sh- form of a scroll. <laughs> and he's got to, like, hang enough his shaft down low, and it's just, like... Waving his balls around, and it's a percussive sh- egg shake. You know, you know, it's funny you say that. Why don't they just make it like that? It makes sense. Hey, maybe we've stumbled onto something here. Because you know, a lot of times you, uh, with those things, for whatever reason, they hold two in like an X pattern. So yeah, it's basically it's a st- like a stem with a ball on either end, yeah. and it's filled with some kind of rocks or sand or something that makes a. So it's two balls yeah. that come together in your hand. You have to hold this weird X. Why not just make it one piece like a penis? Yeah. <laughs> it's got the two balls you shake. All right. Just, Let's pause the show. Take and... the, uh, you know, how the fake balls off a trailer <laughs> hitch, exactly. you know, just use the same uh, mold yeah. or whatever it is and <laughs> make it happen. Yeah, we just need it to be hollow. So we could put yeah, something inside. It can be done. This, Anything can be done. Yeah, this is a great idea. We're on to something. Pot of Thunder. Finally going to turn a profit in 2019. Then to mic it up live, just clip a gooseneck out of your belt. And <laughs> hang a microphone right in front of you. Well, the, the microphone can be the dick simulator. Yeah. Just the, the balls are the egg shaker. There you go. Just stand around shaking your balls <laughs> on stage. See, now that would be preferable to tambourine work for you oh yeah it'd be great yeah that's how it should have been done from the beginning yeah we missed out and generations of rock and roll should have had this yeah i mean as we talk about all the time nowadays it's probably not an acceptable way to conduct yourself on stage given the me too movement and all that stuff well i don't know is there anything wrong with shaking balls I think people would find problems with it. That's upsetting. People will find problems with anything nowadays. I guess. I don't I don't see a victim in that situation, but I guess people are just looking to be upset. Yeah. Well, people so, nowadays are threatened by someone waving their balls in your direction in a possibly threatening manner. <laughs> But in fact, you're just playing percussion. Yeah. You know. You're just celebrating life. Yeah. You're up there. You're playing a playing song the called Getting Tighter off an album called Come Taste the Band. What could possibly be threatening about any of that? No, it's just inviting. Yeah. It's whimsical fun. aggressive on the delivery there yeah and a decidedly uh 70s delivery i mean yes. you listen to this and you you know what decade you're in immediately yeah. which isn't to say i mean i guess by nature you would say that's dated but it doesn't sound dated in a bad way no it just kind of transports you back to uh um you know that time and the uh Seem to be a lot of songs that talked about how great it was to be listening to a band that was locked in and yeah. kicking ass, which is what I'm gathering this song is about. That's what it sounds like so far. So um, when the nighttime comes and I'm ten thousand miles away, just lose yourself and watch the band kick back and play. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll see where it's going. Yeah, you don't. Uh, something else that, that uh, you don't 
seem to hear much much uh, anymore in the rock realm is this kind of song about uh you know how cool the band is and stuff. yeah i mean i guess over time i that went away from rock but then i think hip-hop in general yeah it's like you know puffing your chest out talking about yeah. how good you are or how you know maybe earlier in hip-hop how kick-ass the dj was Right. That was a big thing for yeah. a while. Hip hop's commandeered all the cool stuff <laughs> of uh, but rock and roll, you know, like the, the bravado, the objectifying of women. But I feel yeah, like all the cool stuff about <laughs> right. rock and roll. I feel like that's come and gone, though. Yeah, just like anything else, you know. Yeah. It's like so it's fallen out of favor. It's toxic yeah. ma- masculinity. And I'm sure that stuff still goes on, but I don't think I'm not a guy with my finger on the pulse of that scene but from what i hear you don't it's not what it was like in the 90s or early 2000s yeah it seems like they're getting a little artsier with it with the the kendrick lamars and whatnot yeah um but you know other songs of this ilk that i'm that are coming to mind from this era would be like uh, taking care of business (laughs) bachman turner overdrive Uh, was that about the band yeah was it there, I know that at least the second uh, verse is all about being in a band. Is it? Yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking the beginning. He's talking about the alarm clock and going into the city. But maybe that's to go... Uh... Right. The second verse is definitely about being in a band. Okay. And then you have Boston, uh, rock, rock and, and roll, roll band. band. That's what I was thinking of. One. Yeah. And this then... has a very Boston vibe to me. A little bit, yeah. I mean, maybe not exactly with the music, but like you said, very 70s vocal delivery. Mm-hmm. That's of the time. And I think of Boston when I think of this type of music is like the, I don't know, if you had to pick one who would be like the driving around in the summer with the windows down yeah. 70s music, it would be Boston. Yeah, I got to say, um, I'm probably at the point where I can start listening to that album again because it you could not get away from it on FM radio and uh, just people loving that album and for good reason, but you just couldn't get away from the material. And you, at some point you have to just, you can't consume it anymore. Yeah. So I think I'm ready to get back on that train because I got to tell you, you know, that album came out and just, you want to talk about a, light years ahead in terms of production and just this the the, the sound of it uh just so clean and clear and pristine and the songs were awesome and yeah the, the performance is great i mean just again driven into the ground by rock radio and and fans of the album but a, a, a true masterpiece I mean, I, everybody on the block had a copy of that one so i missed that never i mean i heard the songs on the radio but never listened to it didn't know anyone who owned it got into it in like 2000 i don't know seven or something that's interesting. <laughs> like i randomly was like oh, i'm gonna download this boston album that people <laughs> i've heard people talk about yeah. forever but i've never really listened to anything other than like more than a feeling and yeah i don't even know if i knew rock and roll band um I'm trying to think of what other song like would have been. Something About You is Me? another good deep cut off that. Yeah. Smoking. Smoking's good. Foreplay Long Time. That's one that was on the radio the, all yeah, the time was, in yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Probably everywhere, but right. that was the other one. Yeah. Let Me Take You Home Tonight is another good one. Yeah. The whole damn thing's good. Oh, it's a, it's a masterpiece, but <laughs> it's just, you can't. I understand. What you, you, you have to yeah. set it aside, you know. I was thinking that today on my obscenely long commute home, just trying to find a song that would get my mind off of being angry. And I'm like, I like all these songs, but I've heard them all so many damn times yeah, that I they're can't do the radio yeah. anymore. No, I mean on my shuffle. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm like, getting to that point. Yeah, too. I'm like, God, I love this. One of my favorite albums ever. Don't want to listen to it. Yeah. And don't know when I'm going to want to listen to it ever again. Yeah. Heard it so many times, but whatever. Yeah. That's kind of, I'm there with like most of the Zeppelin on my, uh, iPod it's like I gotta be in the right mood and I rarely am anymore just cause I've yeah. heard it so much yeah but you never know and something comes up on shuffle it might hit yeah. it just grabs you sometimes of course as I was pulling into my uh 
driveway i was blasting easy as it seems as i was rolling up in the driveway it's like you know fucking 52 year old guy (laughs) cranking easy as it seems like getting into it what what a ridiculous vision that must have been from from outside of the vehicle so was it the studio version or was it the retard and boys room cover of it (laughs) i wish i had that uh downloaded audio but no it was the studio (laughs) okay Right. Still love that song. Yeah. A, a wonderful discovery for me from season one. Another vibe I'm getting off of this is uh, like Edgar Winter Group. This kind of this is reminding me of if you're familiar with them at all, like the Frank. I know that's the only and, song. Uh, yeah. Well, what's the uh, what's the other big hit off that album? Uh, damn. Oh, Free Ride. I'm sure you've heard. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, off that sure. same album. The they only come out at night. That's another album that at least two or three of the stoner older brothers had that one in the collection and that had uh, Frankenstein of it on it which uh, the first time you hear that you're just like what the fuck is this is incredible yeah, yeah. and then that one got overplayed but um, there's some other good stuff on there Ronnie Montrose on guitar on that one <clears throat> great band on that album but uh, yeah this is I'm getting a decidedly Edgar Winter group uh, vibe from this. Yeah, this is transporting me back to the uh, early days when I was discovering rock. I, I got to believe, uh, again, some of the uh, stoner older brothers on the block had this one in the collection. We just kind of shuffled right past it. I don't remember seeing it, but, uh, I mean sonically it would make sense for people to be digging into this were lineup changes a big deal like deep purple seemed like they had pretty drastic ones do you think i mean obviously the band still sounds great here but do you remember that being like oh they don't eh, they're stupid now they're not the same guys and this was a little before my time when I was really paying attention to that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think the biggest one that I first uh, was aware of was after Bon Scott died and he was, they were going to replace him. And everybody's yeah. like, how can you replace him? And then they do it and come out with Back in Black. It's like, okay, they're, <laughs> they're doing fine. Yeah, they figured it out. But yeah, this, I mean, with, with uh, Richie Blackmore leaving Deep Purple, that must have been... A, a huge thing and also ian gillen yeah. replaced by coverdale i mean with rock bands it's no offense to the other guys <clears throat> but usually people gravitate to the singer and the lead guitar player those are the guys who are the band and then the other guys are almost like uh i don't know i don't want to say an insulting thing but like uh background players or like more uh, team yeah. players mm-hmm. they're not like the all-star guys you right. know, that everyone loves and and they, they, they weren't, on. weren't the uh, big uh, personalities. Yeah, usually that's the way it is. But Deep Purple didn't. Uh, I mean, the singer left was replaced by Coverdale, and they still had Blackmore for yeah. a couple albums, and then he left. So it was a more of a gradual. Yeah, but it's like a fan until we got to. The, well, if, look what happened to Motley Crue. Yeah, when they put Karabi as the vocalist, they, they was they were basically rejected by the fan base. Right, put out an incredible album and nobody cared. Yeah, oh, well. so, um, but yeah, I mean, Deep Purple. I don't know how many lineups that they had over the years. Probably seven or eight. Who knows? You know the the one that stuck together for. Uh, most of the early 70s known as the Mach 2 lineup is the one that put out most of the iconic material. Mm-hmm. I mean, the big uh, big hits, so to speak, from the Coverdale era are the ones I mentioned earlier, uh, Burn and Stormbringer. Um, the, the ones with this lineup are not as uh, omnipresent on classic rock radio. In fact, I don't remember ever hearing any of this on the radio so you know this is another new discovery for me and so far i'm definitely digging it It 
That's hard. I'm just thinking about playing the bass line and singing at the same time. Yeah. That's a hard one because that's, uh, you know, I, I've tried that over my musical lifetime, playing bass and singing at the same time. And it seems more doable when you're doing more of like a constant do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. But when you're doing like this kind of groove where it's like boom, boom, yeah, boom, I don't know. boom, boom, and then you're do it. and then you're singing a totally different melody. Yeah, you're doing two different do things at once. Yeah, that's really hard. It's like you know, Gene Simmons can do it. Paul McCartney, known for doing it, yeah. and playing interesting bass lines, and also singing and singing well. and singing well. Yeah, it's not like just a you know background vocal no. yelling or something. It's, no, and Glenn Hughes is definitely in that uh, wheelhouse as well. Um, so uh, it's almost like the two things on their own. And I would say the vocal is more impressive than the bass line on their own. But when you put them together, it becomes very impressive. Yeah, I I personally couldn't do it. I I couldn't. Well, I can't sing. Period. But I could couldn't even if I could, I could not sing and play an instrument at the same time. It just I, it, my brain isn't wired that way. Did you ever sing? I bark out a background vocal, but you too. never did like a lead. In oh any hell band? no! Did Nobody you ever try that? No, no, you didn't. You just, just knew just it wasn't your thing. I don't have that talent, and you, and you recognized it early anything. though, because like no one has any talent when they're starting. Yeah, you just knew just, like this yeah. isn't me. I, and also, I was well. I, I won't go so far as to say I was in bands with very good singers, other than myself, early on, but. Uh, I don't know. Just it wasn't something that I was enthused about. I didn't think I was very good at it. Didn't want right. to. Yeah. yeah. You didn't care. No, you I knew don't. the role you wanted. Right. Yeah. And then when I got in the Mean Reds and uh, got with the two guys who were really good singers, not unlike the Coverdale Hughes dynamic, um, you know, it wasn't even a consideration, obviously, at that point. But yeah. no, I never uh, even even remotely considered it. It wasn't like the shock me. Hey, we're going to give the mic to Chris for one no, song. No, that, that was never going to happen. happen. Okay. No. You know, just before this breakdown, I was actually going to make a comparison to something like Casey and the Sunshine Band. <laughs> there it like is. It was almost bordering on like funk disco, and then this breakdown happens. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I was not expecting that at all. But leading up to it, I was like, so you felt there it. elements of casey and the sunshine band in this thing which is a great thing in my opinion i couldn't agree more yeah huge fan oh there's nothing wrong with casey and the sunshine band you know what people complain so much about disco this and disco sucks and all this other stuff compared to the pop music of today I mean, the musicianship and the song craft was outstanding. Yeah, I agree. And, and yet people just hated it back then. The rockers did, of the day. Didn't know how good you had it. No. Should have kept your mouth no. shut. Well, yeah. Even back then, before the internet, people needed shit to bitch about. Yeah, that's that was one of them. That's probably always been a thing. In fact, uh, nodding back to our guest from last week, uh, Meltdown from WRAF in Detroit, that radio station had a club that you could join, and you would get discounts at like record stores or perks at you know wherever, <laughs> various like you know perks it, it, for being a card holder. You would join the club, and you get this gold foil credit card st- size card mm-hmm. it was the dread card mm-hmm. and dread was an acronym for detroit rockers engaged in the abolition of disco engaged in the yes. abolition <laughs> yes it was Jeez, that's how like it, and i've talked about this before on the show it's like 
the rockers they felt so threatened by disco Sounds but like it. it's not like it bumped rock and roll off the airwaves back in the day in detroit there were four full-time rock radio really? stations four yeah wow a WRF is the last one left of those four, but there was no shortage of exposure and opportunities to consume this music. There was no reason to be feel threatened by disco yeah. or punk rock either. Yeah, that was another one, right? People well, didn't like yeah. that when I it mean, that was coming on, but it, it, it didn't really take over the airwaves no. like disco, but... Disco didn't take over the airwaves. It had its own stations where you could go and listen to it if you want. It wasn't shutting down rock radio stations. Right. So there was the the the, the threatened feeling that people had was just it never made sense to me because I mean the, the music the disco music was great. Yeah. You listen to it again. Yeah. All those hits are awesome. They the musicianship, are. song craft. Yeah, you know, the Bee Gees stuff off Saturday Night Fever. I mean, come on. It's great stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I don't is it just something where it's like uh I'm trying to think of what your reason would be. Would it be the fact that it was just popular and from out of nowhere? So you had to be like, What are you listening to that for? That sucks. That new thing. We've talked about it time and time again. Yeah. It goes back to pe- people not wanting to lose their rock credibility it's like who gives a shit is that but i mean do you think that's because bands they liked started kind of tapping into it no i don't think so or just that i think it's just like you couldn't you couldn't reveal to the other rocker friends of yours that you were into disco make you you know uh, that would compromise your credibility or something so stupid that's stupid just listen to what you like and especially in the 70s there's so much great music, which goes back to the clown who criticizes us on iTunes. Like, how can you possibly listen to all the great stuff that came out of the seventies and and do other things with your life? Right. In the meantime, yeah, I got a lawn to mow. I got shit to do. Yeah, but there was so much variety and high level music in the seventies, and you know, looking back, all, other decades as well, but. For me, the seventies was the was the pinnacle of just so much good music, of so much variety, and just uh, great stuff. And and you get one of the benefits of being a fucking moron, like that guy accuses us of being, is that you get to have these new discoveries, like I'm having right now. <clears throat> I've not heard this before, but I am enjoying it, and. Uh, interested to hit play again and see what this breakdown brings us. Now, for real Deep Purple fans, this had to be a a shock to the system to hear this. Um... This is unlike anything they'd ever done previously. Certainly unlike anything that Blackmore would have authorized. <laughs> this is definitely a Bolin influence. And uh, and this is definitely <clears throat> e- gone even further into Edgar Winter Group uh, territory. This is 1975. So yeah. in the, the lifespan of disco... This would be on like the earlier yeah, side, right? It was pre- preceded it. I mean, I don't. Saturday Night Fever was like seventy seven, seventy eight. I think, so, wasn't I think it was seventy seven. Without looking, but yeah, there was a uh, you know, it was definitely coming into vogue. I mean, you you wouldn't listen to this and accuse them of being disco, but yeah, you know, there's also a lot of like your Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Ohio players and stuff. Yeah. Also exceptional music yeah um that uh i'm sure these guys were aware of and were being influenced by sure and it's pretty cool to hear a band of this stature um incorporating contemporary influences and in what they're doing i had no idea they 
put out music like this. I didn't either. It's news to me. Yeah. So now you got a little vibra slap in there. I can fi- picture Coverdale uh, hitting that ball with his schwans. Yeah. <laughs> Well, his hands are full because yeah. he's using the, the scrotum exactly. shakers. Right. So he's got to hit it with something else. Yeah, the vibra slap is a phallic uh, type instrument, something he would gravitate to, I'm sure. <laughs> Smiling the whole time. <laughs> Just turning 90 degrees at the hips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the vibra slap, a very underrated percussive in, percussion instrument, best known for the beginning of Crazy Train, obviously. Yeah. That's the main one. The that inclusion I think of. of that in that song is a, a master stroke. It is, um, and so you've had it twice in this one. So yeah, this is uh, definitely interesting. That's one of those instruments. It's like if you're gonna buy it, you better use it. You well, know, sure. And you're gonna take it on the road with you and your band. But then you could. It's also an instrument you you could very easily over you right so it's a danger you're it's a tight wire rope act yeah. or whatever <laughs> tight rope act because you can't really hit the vibra slap on every downbeat no really. it's got to be used uh judiciously and i don't even think you can use it on every song probably not no so it does seem sort of like a waste of an instrument it's a studio instrument you got laying around i'm not sure you'd bust it out on stage get a case for that yeah, thing you're exactly. gonna put it in your van and drive around big percussion setup yeah That was pretty awesome how they came out of that. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, Tommy Boland, man. Huge, hugely highly regarded in guitar circles, and now I'm understanding why. I mean, is lead playing so far or just not solos, but sort of these uh, melodic hook lines he's throwing in or... Yeah, a little different. Um, so I'd be interested in delving deeper into his catalog and hearing more of his extended solos. But some of this uh, lead playing in terms of introducing some melody is definitely interesting sounding to me. All right, you can hear some Coverdale uh, in that, in that vocal background. section, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a little more conventional, well, not conventional, but more soloing going on there. It's mm-hmm. pretty cool. I'm, uh, yeah, that's that, that review we got <laughs> gave me kind of a complex, and then, of course, we draw this song, and it's like, as a, as a guitar player, I'm legit ashamed that i this is the first i'm probably hearing of tommy bolin yeah i think i've listened to a little snippet here and there of post toasty solo cut he did um post toasty yeah that was a name i think it was the name of one of his solo albums and the title track is an iconic guitar instrumental i'm okay. aware of it i've never heard it and I think I've heard bits of uh, some of the stuff he did with the Billy Cobham Spectrum, I think it's called. But I've never heard any of his Deep Purple or James Gang work. So I think I need to uh, delve into it. Um, it's it's I'm definitely enjoying it. <laughs>
Yeah, he definitely went off there at the end. Yeah. And there you have it. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Getting tighter. So it's that time, Chris. It's time to vote Hell or Hot No, it's not time to vote Hell or Hallelujah. It's time to vote Sweet Surrender or Kick in the Crotch. I'm gonna go first today. Why the hell not? I'm gonna give this a sweet surrender. It's sweet surrender. Hell yes. Mm. I like it. Um, like I said earlier, this music I missed it the first time it came out. Anything from the '70s that I listened to when I was a kid would have been Kiss. Hmm. I'm struggling to think of what else. I would say uh, maybe the Jacksons. I don't know. When did Off the Wall come out? Like 79? Or was that 81? I can't remember. But there wasn't a ton of 70s music. Maybe a little bit of Alice Cooper. Um, But mostly 80s stuff. So I missed this type of music when it was happening. Missed it later when I was growing up. Didn't hear it. And then uh, started hearing it more intentionally later, like, you know, in my 20s, just kind of going back and listening to it and finding that in my head, I always thought like, oh, these bands like Fog Hat, that's a name I would throw out as like "Eh, stupid music. What is this Fog Hat? Just dismissing it outright. But really, when you go back and listen to a lot of the stuff, some of it's really cool. This is one of those songs. Um, Great musicianship cool song um i can't think of anything bad to say good vocal everything sounds good great drumming oh which yeah. we didn't really talk much about but great drumming oh, ian pace one of the all-time great drummers no question about it yeah one of those british drummers who definitely brought the uh jazz influence to uh to his playing yeah you hear that but he's also hits pretty hard too oh no question about that no, yeah I mean, Deep Purple, uh, Black Moriero is definitely known for being a heavy, loud, in-your-face band. You could definitely bring it in that regard. But, you know, he's one of these guys like Mitch Mitchell, John Bonham and stuff. Just had that swing, jazz swing to their playing. Yeah. Because all those guys worshipped at the altar of Buddy Rich, Gene Krupa and stuff. Yeah, it makes sense, but and it also like there wasn't really anywhere else to go once you got to a certain level with pop music, I guess. That's where you go when you want to do more, right? So if you were a drummer, it's like I can do all these, you know, one, two, three, four beats. What else is there? I'm getting pretty good. Then you start picking up jazz stuff and working that into your playing. Yeah, and we talked about or I talked about it a few episodes ago where the whole genesis of the guitar solo and yeah. rock music or pop music was really just an effort to be on the level of these j- yeah. great jazz musicians, but in a more palatable context, yeah. so to speak. And that stuff did evolve. I didn't mean that the only thing other than basic pop music is jazz, but I mean, at the time, I think that when they wanted to do something and show off their musicianship, they went to their jazz influences. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, those, everybody knows that the giants of, uh, technical playing and just, uh, you know, musicianship just for, from a, from a straight ahead musical standpoint, the jazz guys have it, have it locked down, but yeah. it's not, palatable to the mass audience yeah all right man your turn to vote uh sweet surrender for sure for me that's pretty cool it's sweet surrender hell yes it's funny you mentioned fog hat because that was another one that was in the collection of the stoner older brothers on the block (laughs) the uh fog hat live where uh uh, you know the 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 letters and the word live were cut out. The inner sleeve had all the four band members oh, in cool. each letter, and it was it was uh, photographed at one of those like day on the green outdoor 
cotton bowl day long festivals like in the middle of the day so bright sunshine just like 80,000 people and you listen to that album and you're just like you're you're instantly transported into that environment which is the great thing about 70s live albums that's what they did yeah they put you in the audience with the production and the yes the overdubs and all that stuff right you know? I thought only Kiss was the only band that ever overdubbed. Well, anything. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying they all did that, no, but know, there was but... some production and you know studio. I'll tell you, fixing that went on to enhance the experience. I'll tell you, no one talks about anybody other than Kiss. Well, doing Thin overdubs. Lizzy, Live and Dangerous, is the other main offender for purists. Oh, okay, out there. all right. Yeah. I guess there's another one, but my God. Well, you can't yeah. talk about a live Kiss album without people constantly. No, you can't talk about live albums without somebody bringing that you up. Know. And then when they bring it up, they act. It, it, it's as they think they're imparting <laughs> some knowledge on everybody. It's like, yeah, we all we've known this for forty <laughs> years. <laughs> Fuck off! Don't you hate that? That I do hate. That. Not just in that that uh, one instance, but just in general. When someone's like, you know, and they tell you like the most basic fact yeah. that you've known since you were born about someone. It's so stupid. It's like, get out of here. And it's on guitar nerd forums. It's it's prevalent to the fact that it's just laughable that people think that they're informing anybody with their input. It's just like, shut up. I just assume they're children at that point. Well, they I'm might like, as well or, be. Yeah. Fucking man children is what they are. <laughs> also known as bedroom dickheads. It, it's true, though. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, you, you know, you you went to college and you went straight in your corporate job. And now <clears throat> here you are in your late 40s and your 50s. And you're going to go plink around on classic rock covers over at the corner B-dubs. And you think you're a fucking <laughs> renegade now. And you're yeah. imparting all this wisdom on guitars and music to guys like me who did it for real back in the day it's right like, kiss my ass just shut up <laughs> the local beat it's true it's ridiculous <laughs> and, they, and they fucking have this attitude like they're hot shit it's like i i i take personal offense to it because i did it for real yeah eight uh, uh, loaf of bread and a can of pork and deep beans every day for an entire winter so don't talk to me about what it's like to be fucking in a band and doing something real with music yeah been there and also if you play covers and you're acting like you're hot shit uh, yeah don't even start with me on that. yeah it's like get the uh, hell out of here yeah fuck off <laughs> I mean, hey, have fun playing covers. Yeah, but, but it's don't... the acting like you're hot yeah, shit part. Right. Yeah. I got a gig this weekend. Yeah, good for you. Go yeah. fuck off. <laughs> Out of here. Go fuck Dick off. <laughs> fucking gig. Nobody wants to hear your bullshit. Yeah, no one cares. Clamoring for a DJ to take over. Yeah, they can't wait. Play music that people actually want to hear. Not your shit covers. A bunch of. F- Guys like me fucking playing out in public. Nobody <laughs> wants that. <laughs> Nobody. Zero. Yeah. That ship has sailed for uh, a lot of us. It's terrible. No one wants to yeah. look at us no, anymore. No, they don't. And, and the, the, when pe- there are people out there who can't accept that. It's pathetic. Yeah. All right. So, oh, and I had one more fog hat thing. I was saying, oh, it's kind of like a punchline band for whatever reason when I was growing up. Which I don't think they deserve that. I'm just telling you kind of how I felt. But um, one year, one of my friends bought me for Christmas a gag gift, and it was a fog hat CD. Like, hey, here's a piece of shit, you idiot. And so that's how it was, they were treated at the time. Which I don't get. I mean, I, 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 in retrospect, I get it. But, I mean, they were they were as good as anybody else in the 70s and they had some iconic tunes i mean slow ride come on yeah incredible but it it might have just been one of those things where it's like this music's not cool anymore and they're called fog hat yeah, like it's the, the name to throw right, out when the name was odd yeah we're not into this anymore this music's done and fog hat so yeah, yeah. but it, it, right in the mid 70s they were they were as good as anybody yeah. and uh and, and and it just makes me wonder how 
this incarnation of Deep Purple eluded me back in the day. I mean, somebody had to have this, these albums in their in their collection, and we just breezed by them and never listened to them. But uh, this is definitely on par with what everybody's older brother was listening to. I keep going back to that, but that's, <laughs> that's how a stoner it, older brother playlist. That's how I. That's how it, this this jag off from uh, iTunes talking about how things were pre-internet days. <clears throat> That's how we discovered most of the rock music that uh, got us into the genre is, is uh, infiltrating somebody's older brother's bedroom and going through the vinyl collection. Yeah. That's where we discovered most of this stuff. I go down the list and Hotel California, they only come out at night. First Boston album, Fog Hat Live. I mean, Steve Miller Band was a, a big uh, uh, presence in those album collections. I mean, yeah. it's just how we, we became fascinated with rock music and how, how this one never surfaced is pretty surprising. Yeah. Well, Two Sweet Surrenders wins you a trip to all right Hammond I got a question for you the next round that's right Paul Stanley wants to know if we think getting tighter is a rock and roll boner classic voted by the two boners on today's program 1975 you know, Paul Stanley, he wanted to know what was happening. This is right when Kiss was breaking, or about to break. Yeah. So, he wanted to know what direction to take the band in to launch them into superstardom. Stop it. There we go. All right, so, is this a rock and roll boner classic? Hmm. thinking our votes are being uh, computed tabulated if you will yeah i'm i'm gonna my votes in all right my vote is in as well why don't you go first okay so again the two man voting two man is vote. our take on the uh, alabama <laughs> Crimson Tide. That's uh, correct. Rally and cry. Which that T-shirt is up on the uh, T Public site now. Yeah. Has it been up there for a while? I put it up there yesterday. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, I have to uh, publicize that yeah. for sure. That's something people uh, have responded to positively. Yes, that's right. This is the. Roll Boner T-shirt we're talking about. You can find it if you go to potofthunder.com and click merchandise. You'll find it. Everything's there. All right. Two-man vote. Uh, Soft Boner. It's a humiliating kick in the crotch! Is that really the sound clip you play for a uh, no boner? I thought that was the first uh, uh, first round voting. Sweet surrender, a kick in the crotch. Yeah, we did the same thing for both rounds. Oh, I because didn't know we that. didn't have it. Yeah, it has the the, the Pierre clip right. in it. So, uh, but that's something we need to evolve with. We need a new clip. Yeah, maybe. I could have sworn we had a different set, but. I, oh, well. If we do, I don't know what yeah, it was. Well. We need to get one, so let's yeah, figure that we'll out. Figure it out. But anyway, no, out the window. Not a rock and roll boner. I was going to vote the same way. You are? I, I was not obligated to reveal my vote since uh, it had already been closed out the voting. But no. I was going to vote the same way. Oh, and here's my thinking behind <laughs> it. Pushed a lot of songs through to boner status lately. I don't want to get too giddy about this new discovery yet. I w- do plan on delving into more uh, Deep Purple of this era and Tommy Bolin in general. I liked it. Uh, I liked it a lot, but uh, I don't want to get 
too uh, too giddy or uh, you know overreact to it just yet. I, I, it, it's inspiring me to discover more. So let's put it that way. That's good. But yeah, it's oh, it's definitely good. I mean, the, 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 to repeat, I don't know how this ever eluded me, but uh, new discoveries. You gotta love it. Either old stuff you never heard before or newer stuff that's coming out. It's good to have new music to listen to, like you talked about earlier. Even the stuff that's on our iPods comes up on shuffle. You skip over it. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'm not really in the mood for that. I've heard it a million times. Yeah. And then another day it comes up and you feel like listening to it. Yeah, it's the best thing you've ever heard in your life. Yeah. But this, I'd never heard it before, and uh, it's definitely uh, going to send me down that rabbit hole i think so that's a good thing so that's a great compliment i think so thank you to alex for submitting this song yeah, great uh, choice for a for a younger fellow too absolutely very, uh, very refined musical tastes yeah be interested to hear who turned him on to this music that's, i'm always interested in you know one of the things that was interesting to me when we started this podcast is how guys like you were 15 years younger than me. How you ever got into Kiss? I just couldn't imagine it that far after their heyday. Right. But, you know, people. Uh, but hey, there's guys 15 y- years younger than me who are into Kiss. Yeah. Stuff comes on your radar and you either like it or you don't. It yeah. Grabs you or you don't. Yep. And, uh, you know, this is intriguing me to uh to learn more i'd definitely like to hear uh, a couple cuts off this album with coverdale on lead vocal that'd be interesting yeah all right and if you want to submit a song go to potofthunder.com click that submit a song button and make it happen let's rubber stamp it chris it's official i'm sorry if you disagree with us, but... That's just the fucking way it is. So deal with it. It's still funny, huh? Yeah, that never gets old. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's something else I need to go back and listen to. Is just that whole... Oh, and it's a diary. Tribe. Yeah. Amazing. And you want to talk about something else that's been doctored after the fact. It's like you can hear where some of the... Uh, bits have been spliced together and rearranged and like some of the some of the bits have, are reused throughout that thing yeah but if you listen to it front the back it's just hilarious <laughs> and harkens back to the legendary buddy buddy rich tapes that you know talking about pre-internet days it was circulated around on cassette tapes it's crazy you know, the first it? time i ever heard it was this drummer guy I worked with at Guitar Center had them. I think every drummer on the planet had a copy of those. It comes point. with your first drum kit. And he played it for us once. We were just like sitting there slack jawed. It's like, oh my God, this is incredible. You know? <laughs> but you can understand it when you're on that level and you got fucking guys who are dragging you down. It's yeah. like, you're not going to stand for that shit. No, definitely Amazing. not. Amazing. Yeah. I halfway wonder though. I'd like to hear the show that they were complaining about, and hear if there actually was bad playing, or if it's just putting fear into these guys. Yeah, and there's also the element of when you're on that level, is anything ever good enough again? It's like there's an impossible standard, I think, that comes into play. I mean, could it just be like, oh, this venue sucks, or I didn't like my lunch? Or whatever it is, you're just... It could be anything. <laughs> yeah, you're but, just pissed off about something. Yeah, you know, and just a, a, in general, the a, a display of power and authority yeah, that they're right. doing. But yeah. it could be any of any or all of those things, but yeah. just for, for, for anything to inspire such an outburst is just amazing. It is. Have you ever yelled like that at anyone in your life? I chewed out a few people at the cafe, not employees, but like jackasses who were acting like fuckheads in my place. Oh. Dragged them out of there and fucking tore them a new one right <laughs> on the sidewalk. Would this be people who are like, quote unquote, moshing or yeah. something in a in a cafe? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was two or three incidents incidents of that ilk where I just really just just went off on somebody verbally. Wasn't that the end of bands performing there? Wasn't there a situation like that? And then you said that's enough and canceled all future oh, shows. The end was when I took out an ad for my music <laughs> aspect in Lounges' magazine and it opened me up to the scrutiny of BMI <laughs> and ASCAP. I don't know why that makes me laugh. So, well, it's, it, it should it's it should make you laugh because it's like I was trying to you know advance the music end yeah, of it, and yeah. because of that, I had to pay the licensing fees which is reasonable i'm not an anti-licensing fee guy i wasn't aware of it at the time the yeah guy who we took the cafe over from didn't tell me about it and again i wasn't aware of it mm-hmm. they made me aware of it and then and at the, the the music enter- aspect of the enterprise ended up costing me money at that point so i had to pull a plug on it yeah it's just funny though Maybe not funny at the time, but looking back on it, that you were trying to do something to make things better, and all that happened was something worse, as far as the business side of it. It's a it backfired. Yeah. yeah. Oh just, yeah. That's that's a, a classic backfire. Just makes me laugh. Yeah. I guess <laughs> I, mean, I can laugh at it now too. But. These things happen. Yeah. It could have been worse if you're going to have a backfire. Yeah. Who'd have thought that anyone from BMI or ASCAP would even read that? Bird cage, cage designer. <laughs> you know, something you, you find at the bottom of a hamster cage, and <laughs> these fucking publishing companies actually reading it. So they're the only ones reading it. They're just looking yeah, for no shit. It's just a collection, or it's a it's a list of people yeah. to collect money from. Yeah, that was an eye opener. I wasn't aware of that, but uh, you know, you read stories about fucking clubs uh, refusing to pay those fees and just getting hammered and in court and stuff it's like you can't it's, it's a cost it. of doing business you have to do it yeah all right well you know what time it is chris sing away yes chief Baseball fever, catch it. There you go. Who was that? That was uh, Tim Meadows oh, right. playing, <laughs> playing right. a character on Saturday Night Live. All right, so that's right. It's time for a Yard O Questions. That is the time of the show. When you, the listener, submits not one, not two, but three questions... And those questions are answered by whoever the hell is on the show that week and Chris. So today, our Yardo questions comes to us from Ken Block. Oh, and I should say, uh, you put out a message asking for some more Yards O questions. That's, that's correct. You, you told me that... Uh we were running low, if not completely out. We were running low, if not completely out, of the post-kiss-only questions. Oh, okay. There, there are several yards that are very deep kiss-only questions. Oh, okay. All right. And I'm not saying those are in the trash, but we needed some variety. Yeah. So. Well, there's some uh, kiss member solo material on the list so if any of those surface we can dust off some of the kiss only questions absolutely so today's three questions come from now have we re re supplied uh, the questions to a satisfactory amount yes okay yes that was good keep them coming though keep them coming but yes good response we hate to run low on that stuff yeah it makes us nervous yeah (laughs) So Ken Block says your three, in all caps, questions. He gets it. Question one. What is your view of Queen with Adam Lambert? I missed the Queen thing by a few years, and they are one of my all-timers. Do I spend the money, upwards of $250, to see them in decent seats? 
I've seen some YouTubes and they are okay, but didn't seem worth that kind of cash. Although I'd love to hear Brian May and Roger Taylor live. I have a feeling I'll leave disappointed and down at least 250. What are your views on this? Do you want me to go? Yes. Well, I would say that if, if that's your inkling, I would not drop 250 bucks on it. I think... Uh, I think you're answering your own question there, but I will say that uh, you know anybody complaining about what they're doing nowadays, you know it's it's Brian May and Roger Taylor's decision to do what they want to do with the brand equity that they have yeah. earned with the band Queen. Um, I think Adam Lambert's a pretty good choice, you know, a contemporary known guy mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, certainly a better fit than Paul Rogers was I thought that was know? such a weird choice I, I, yeah I never understood that it was I mean if it was a strange. new band altogether with those guys fine but it seemed yeah, like I, an odd fit yeah, for Queen that, that, that I, didn't, I didn't get and I, I, I'm a, a Paul Rogers fan yeah I'm not bashing shooting him, star <laughs> aside um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think a Adam Lambert's a fine choice. Um, you know, is it worth two hundred fifty bucks, especially when you have reservations going in? I would say probably not. That's a lot of money. Maybe enjoy the DVDs from the heyday. Yeah. But the other question is, if you've got it to spend, maybe it's how how concerned you are with with parting with two fifty. But if you do want to pay some kind of tribute to. Uh, Roger Taylor and Brian May, then by all means, I'm sure you'd have a good time. It's probably a good show. Yeah, but if you're going and strictly, Lambert's for, not going to tank. At least not no. going to go out there and just phone it in. I mean, he's definitely into it, and and he's 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 the choice of the two remaining members. So yeah, it's got to count for something. Got to give them some credit for being able to make the right choice for themselves. All right, so here's my vote. Unless this money is going to uh, make you miss a car payment or house payment or someone's going to be hungry, just go. You'll you'll forget that you spent the money and you'll remember that you had a good time. Right. So. And it's like anything else. If you can afford it, why not? Just do it. And you but, know whether you can afford it or not. Yeah. There's no, gee, uh, there's no gray area there. You yeah. can either afford it or you can't. And yeah. You know the answer. <laughs> It's like people know right from wrong, and yeah. they decide to do wrong shit just because they feel like it. Yeah. You know, it's like the back to the beginning of the show. You said that, you know, sometimes you just have to do things because you don't know when the end will be. Well, there's that too, yeah. I mean, if, you, you, if you've never seen uh, Queen before, Roger and Brian in action, which I haven't. I've never seen them live. I'm not particularly interested in going but uh if if you're into seeing them you should go because yeah. uh you know you got to see these guys while they're still around yeah while they're still around and again that's my philosophy on a lot of these things if you can afford it in a few months are you going to be thinking about that 250 dollars? if the answer is no then just go for it right because you will remember the show I'm a little concerned about the reservations he has going. In, yeah, you know, yeah, if that's gonna, if, if those preconceptions are gonna impact his ability to enjoy himself. Yeah, is it gonna be something where if it, if they don't knock it out of the park, he's gonna be pissed off and thinking about his wasted money? Maybe. Yeah. Ken, that's up to you to decide. Yes, it we, is. But we gave you some insight. Yeah, don't blame us if you go and you're. Your assumptions prove true, and you wish you had that two hundred fifty dollars back. Yeah. It's not our fault. <laughs> we're not liable for that. No, we're not. All right. Question two: What is your view of Zach Wilds playing in the past twenty years compared to the first ten? Today, it looks like Zach, sounds like Zach, but plays like a caricature of Zach. That guy was killing it then. Oh, wait, sorry. That guy was killing it, then all of a sudden became a frantic, soloing maniac that never takes a note off. He was on target to be the rock guy. 
I went from loving him to hating him all of a sudden. What happened, and what is your view on his playing? Uh, I would. I think he nailed it with that assessment. I mean, uh, talked about it. Um, I think even last episode, but uh, summer internship again, 1989. One of the shows they sent me to review was Ozzy on the No Rest for the Wicked tour. Which I believe was Zach Wilde's first tour with the band. So he was like 19 or whatever. So when you, he was incredible. Were you into Ozzy then? Uh, not, not especially. Not especially. Okay. I mean, you know, more into Sabbath. Uh, but I mean, I was definitely stoked to go to, to that go show. To go to the show. And Zach Wilde was fucking incredible, you know. And uh, then he did the few more albums with Ozzy. He did that Pride and Glory project, which little southern rock infused stuff which is a great album um and then i agree with them that the black label society stuff is friggin' unlistenable is it i actually own one of their albums sonic brew is the name of it i think they played that in its entirety recently uh, here uh I was on some email list where it was like, uh, click here for your free ticket I, I to see that. Sonic Brew in its entirety. That is the worst example of the brick wall mastering distorted mess of. I can't even. I can't even listen to five seconds of that thing. Really, it's terrible. I mean. For all I know, the material is incredible, but just the, the sonics of it are just dog shit. You can't listen to it. Um, and the, I would say the other concerning thing is uh, he, he does the Zach Sabbath thing now, or it's just him and, and, and two other guys, and they do all Sabbath covers. And he, he's the news of late is that he's going to do a... Uh, complete recreation of the debut Black Sabbath album. Okay. If he's if they're going to do that, he's going to have to do what is seemingly impossible, which is to scale it back, <laughs> way back with with how he approaches the guitar nowadays cuz he's totally right. It's just just constant fast flurries of notes, the fucking pinch harmonics every other note. It's just way over the top if he's gonna do anything even remotely <laughs> close to a faithful rendering of that first album he's gonna have to ratchet it back a, a, a long way to make it convincing and not have it be a complete uh, travesty but I'm interested in hearing it so but yeah in his early days he was awesome and I, I Still love the early work, and he's a, he's a great uh, great guitar player. But you know, kind of as Ken accurately observed, he's become a bit of a caricature of himself. But he's not the only one. Yeah. Question three: What song or songs bring a smile to your face, no matter what mood you are in? For what it's worth, mine is Safety Dance and Silly Love Songs. Cheers, gentlemen. Oh, P.S. Hi, Nick. We miss you. Ken Block. Nick's actually here. He's here every week. He just doesn't talk. He's just sitting there. We only have two mics from a uh, blue microphone, so Nick doesn't have one. Yeah, it's not true. Not I'm true. lying. Fake news. Yes, I'm fibbing. There's a third mic that's not being used right now. All right, so... Chris, uh, song or songs that uh, put a smile on your face, as Ken said, no matter what mood you're in. Well, if I can hearken back to what I mentioned before, easy as it seems, when that <laughs> kicks in, that bass line, I'm just like, I know that I've, I've been for three and three and three minutes and change of absolute pleasure every time, and uh, then I'm just gonna mention another one that uh, Andy will be in on board with uh, fresh cool in the great game. one I yeah mean, that's what, what a what a great great song uh, fits uh, exactly how you described you know you, you hear the opening drum beat of that yeah it's like again I'm in for the the next three to four minutes of my life are gonna be very <laughs> pleasurable <laughs> 
And uh, how could, you know, a Coverdale-esque perpetual smile, how could you not have it? Yeah. I'm any, just I'm, any coming to mind for you, you know, other than that one? I'm just thumbing through a couple things here. One that comes to mind, and I know we've discussed before, is Dreams by Van Halen. I don't know why. I think we talked about it in at length at one point. Probably, I think it was when we had uh, Jack Broad on, and we were talking about uh, "I'm the One." But I, it's partially just makes me laugh, but I also know it's good. Something about it, though, makes me smile, so that qualifies. Yep. Another one is Hall of the Mountain King by Sabotage. <laughs> That's one for yeah, sure. That's a weird one. Fred Bear, probably. But that doesn't come on very often. No. That's not in my playlist, but that's one that, leading up to our episode, whenever that was, like a year or two ago, that was one that anytime I did hear it, I would just instantly start laughing. Yeah. So I was excited to talk you're about not, that. You're not laughing with it. You're no. laughing at it. But hey, a smile sure. a right. smile's a yeah. smile. Yes, but yeah. it's, not, it's not a smile of pleasure derived from the quality of the music. It's... La- a smile derived from the comedic elements of the rid- yeah. sheer ridiculousness of it. Yeah. Oh, what else? I have another one. Oh, um, Heaven Tonight, Ingve Malmsteen. That's another one that fits into that category, but that's a good handful for now. Off the first few selections, looking at my phone or things I thought of. Yeah, I, I mean, I, if I put more thought of, into it, I'd be able to rattle off some more with those the two off the top of my head you know it's a funny thing though like if you said make a list spend the day making a list of like your top 25 all-time favorite songs just going through stuff on your phone i don't think any of them would be the makes me smile no matter what songs no that's not necessarily my favorite thing agreed yes but yeah there are Songs that make me smile, which is just a funny thing. And I, you know, you like things for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean it's your favorite, but it, uh, you know, makes you feel good for one reason or another. Positive impact on you. There you go. So thank you to Ken. If you want to submit a Yardo questions, please do go to potofthunder.com. That's where everything is. Potofthunder.com. Can you figure it out? Yardo question, submit a song, buy merchandise if you want. I'm not trying to ram that down your throat, but uh, we've got like 30 pins left that come with the ultra rare autographed postcard signed by Gnarly Nick, yeah, the garlic right. dragon. Got about that element. You yeah. can play that up more. That's right. So, you know, once these sell out, design number two is unlocked. And, you know, it might be a great design. I hope it is. I think it will be, and I think you'll like it. But the postcard will not be autographed by Gnarly Nick. Probably not. Unless he makes some triumphant return that we don't know about. But if you want the Gnarly Nick autograph, the only way to get it is to buy that. So I'll play that up more. I forgot about that element. Yep. So that's on uh, potofthunder.com and Nick will see zero dollars from these sales but we will sell his autograph and keep the money and split it between the two of us when we uh, go it's to up to the lawyers to sort out really there's no there's no profit <laughs> no, no there's no profit to split no don't profit don't worry this yeah this is all lies but yeah if you want it it's there for you so how about that and also finally a reminder if you want to submit an opening for this show Yell Pot of Thunder into your phone. Get your friend to do it. Get your daughter to do it. Uh, get whoever, your mom, whatever you want to do. And then send that file to Pot of Thunder at yahoo.com. And we will play it on the show. Chris, I think that's all the time we've got for today, isn't it? I think so. I think that's going to do it. And, uh, you know, I'm. St- Surprised it didn't happen earlier, but it's never too late. I give him the uh, holiday. It's been a long time since we had a proper flyover. Oh, you know what? So, uh, gotta... Hey, man, here in America, it's a sacred holiday. Hey, we don't even acknowledge that holiday. No. 
We do. We do. And, we uh, do. Some, I heard someone say that. That's what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, it's, uh, of all the holidays to announce that you don't acknowledge, this one is probably the worst of it because yeah. of what it represents. Yeah, you sound like a complete shithead. You to really say do. That you just you you you, sh- you should be beaten to a pulp for <laughs> saying that. Is basically how yeah. it works. No one cares about that dumb yeah, holiday. Exactly. What are you saying, you idiot? All those guys who made the ultimate sacrifice. Who cares about them? That's yeah. pretty much what you're saying. That's what you're well saying. done. Yeah. Right. Mentally ill shit for brains. <laughs> Uh, here they come, here they come. USA! 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 Oh, yeah. Tribute. That needs to be it's a robust sonic boom there. That was devastating. Yeah. All right. Well, hope you enjoy your Memorial Day, and we will be back next week. Who 